Hi there, I'm Dr. JC Lowen, a PhD clinical neuroscientist here at Cognitive FX. We're a specialized concussion treatment center, and what I'll be discussing today is the autonomic nervous system. When it comes to concussions or mild traumatic brain injuries, also called MTBIs, the autonomic nervous system isn't often talked about. When we're considering how concussions occur, you might have heard your doctor explain how the brain actually moves inside of the skull, hitting the, ins the inside of the skull to cause an injury. Something that we don't often pay attention to, and something that many medical professionals may have not been educated on, is how concussions can also affect our body's nervous system, which is actually some of the primary neurons or those cells that control it, are located in our brain stem, which is right down here. Now, if you think of something like a whiplash type injury or a concussion, it's not just the brain moving inside of the head. There can also be damage to the cervical spine and tearing or axonal shearing of the cells of our brain stem. Now, let's talk about what is the autonomic nervous system? How can it be impacted by injury? And what kind of symptoms can it lead to? First of all, we need to separate the autonomic nervous system into two pieces. The sympathetic autonomic nervous system, or our fight or flight system, and our parasympathetic, which is our rest and digest. These should be constantly active and balancing of each other out to create homeostasis, or a balanced system. Injury to the brain, brainstem, and spinal cord can cause disruption or imbalance in these two systems. Now, what I like to think about when we're discussing brain injury and the effects on the ANS is almost like a teeter-totter. We have, we should have this nice balance between the two systems. But often, mild traumatic brain injury, again MTBI, can cause an imbalance where the sympathetic nervous system has more power, essentially, than the parasympathetic. Now, why is this important for the symptoms that patients might experience after a brain injury? Let's, let's talk about some neuroanatomy. Why is there a neuroscientist talking to you about autonomic nervous system headaches? So first of all, when we're talking about the nerves of the sympathetic and parasympathetic um, autonomic nervous system sides, we have to consider where they're located. Parasympathetic systems are very sectioned. So there are a large number up here near the brain and the cervical spine. There's also a large number more towards the lumbar and sacral. The sympathetic nerves are very dispersed and they're very connected to segments of the spine throughout the entire spine. Now, when we consider this imbalance, you know, this, this trend towards more sympathetic power, that means that the symptoms that you might experience coming from disruption in the autonomic nervous system will be very unique. Some patients may display symptoms in more of the GI area or gastrointestinal area versus other patients may display symptoms that are more related to the heart, so heart rate or blood pressure. Some patients display symptoms that are more related to lower abdomen. So this could be relating to actual lower GI function, including things like symptoms like diarrhea or constipation, which can be hard to talk about with your doctor. So let's discuss what patients might experience. I mentioned a little bit about some of the, you know, those unmentionables when you go into your doctor's office. But this is very important for you know, patients to realize when they notice differences after their head injury. Some of the symptoms that patients often talk about during their consultations with us at Cognitive FX are changes in their innate blood pressure. Some patients develop hypertension or an increase in standing blood pressure or hypotension after injury. In fact, something we commonly find our patients to be diagnosed with after their concussion is something called postural orthostatic tachycardia syndrome, or a lot easier to say, POTS. This is a syndrome where patients will notice changes in heart rate depending on their body's position. Some of our patients notice that if they stand up too quickly or if they lay down at a certain, you know, if they lay down in a certain way, their actual heart rate changes and they may experience 
dizziness, fainting, exacerbation of headaches, or other ANS-type symptoms. Other symptoms that may come with autonomic nervous system disruption are things like issues with temperature regulation. This can actually be very connected to blood pressure and blood flow throughout the body. Our body naturally adjusts vasodilation or expansion of blood vessels and vasoconstriction or constriction of blood vessels to provide heat throughout the body. Some patients notice that when they have this disruption in the autonomic nervous system, they get, may get cold fingers or cold feet. They may notice periods of flushing or sweating, especially at night, or other issues that we generally term as issues with thermoregulation. Lastly, the symptom that we need to discuss are autonomic nervous system headaches or ANS headaches. If you're interested in knowing more about post-traumatic headaches or headaches that occur after concussion, please refer to our other video where myself and Dr. Alina Fong, a PhD clinical neuropsychologist, go through post-traumatic headaches. But for the purposes of this video, ANS headaches are so important because they are very commonly seen in our patients and described as sometimes a band around the head, a vice, or like a belt that's pulling tighter and tighter. But these autonomic nervous system headaches are very related to the underlying cause for chronic symptoms after brain injury. And that is something called neurovascular coupling, or NVC. Now let's discuss the final piece to this puzzle, this very important organ that we've seemed to ignore throughout this entire video, the brain. How do we look at neurovascular coupling and get an idea of how this main control center for our nervous system is involved in injury? You can actually look at neurovascular coupling dynamics via a technique called functional MRI. This is a scan by which we can actually see neurovascular coupling dynamics occur in real time, identify exactly where in the brain disruptions are occurring, and design a tailored treatment program. In fact, we've had patients during the course of treatment who have had their POTS symptoms eliminated in the course of just a couple days. Thank you again for watching and we encourage you to look to our other videos for more information about the nervous system and concussion healing. For more in-depth information on the topic we discussed today, please click on the link in the description below.